Welcome to Owen and Brew's Barbecue. Today we have something special cooking on the grill for you. We've got blurred burgers. Yeah, those creatures that you loved so much from episode chapter one. They're back. And we've got some cooks in the house ready to, to chop them up. I don't know, grill them. So today we, <laughs> today we have Chris from Boston, Nick, as always, and special guest. Thanks for joining us. All the way from Casino Skunk Royale, we have Ralph. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> you did that on purpose. What's you up? know what, Matt? I, I look forward to your intros. I really do. They're, they're gold. Thanks. Oh, yeah, and I'm Matt. So um, I like blurs before it was cool. You think, blur- you, think, you think a blur burger is a little bit fatty? It probably tastes like buffalo, I'm assuming. You think? Yeah. Buffalo's pretty yeah. lean. I don't know. Yeah. 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 You know, you, you remember them, right? From the the Ewok Ewok adventure? adventure, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm they, surprised they, John Favreau didn't do stop motion because <laughs> uh, the Mandalorian ship, the the Razor Crest, which I believe he named after looking at his bathroom counter, he uh, <laughs> he's he. I guess that's a model. It's a model ship. It's not CG. Oh, okay. Huh. Really? Yeah, and that's they awesome. they used old. Like uh, old, uh, what do you call that? Motion, motion, shit. <laughs> Sorry, God damn it! I know <laughs> you just told me. You just told me. It's okay. It's, listen, Sorry. here's the deal. Here's the deal. <laughs> when I get excited about talking, talk Star Wars. It happened when I talk about Lost. Um, it, it it'll slip. It'll slip. It's uh, the motion control camera system that they yeah. use. They developed for uh, for Star Wars seventy seven. Um, they apparently are using that for the ship ship shots. Okay, uh, ship with a P. I I I read you loud and clear there. <laughs> so um, for those uh, for the other two gentlemen in this <laughs> podcast that may not know, uh, Ralph and I uh, recorded a part one, basically. Without you guys, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm yeah. out of here. <laughs> Nick's, yeah, because Nick's... I have bones. I have bones to pick with you two. That's why. And I told oh, them before right? the other show. Oh yeah. Okay, so uh, I listened. To, I listened to this program. Just yeah. so you know, mm-hmm. I'm out there listening. Well, Chris called, talked All about right. me calling him out. Yes. L- listen, listen. Justify the only calling me out. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I might have been. I might have been. My my Twitter words might have seemed a little harsh. No, no, no. no I, but I what, what's funny it. was okay. So you said that you said, oh, and then we get our our lost reference, and just like Jack on the show on the episode, I was like, what the f is he talking about? I'm like, what <laughs> lost reference? And I'm like, I'm like, does he think that Carl Weathers was Bill Duke? Because Bill Duke was lost. And Bill Duke was also a predator with Carl Weathers. And I'm like, no. And then he said, Razzle Dazzle. I'm like, he thinks he's Billy D. <laughs> <laughs> and what is, what's great about that is my entire life <laughs> to this day, my sister gets those two actors confused. Oh, okay. So you're not the only one, but I, it, it made me and crack Cindy up. did the same thing the other day, apparently, according to Jack and yeah. his Twitter feed. So when I called you out on it, my sister like posted a reply on Twitter with just like the the emoji with the face without the mouth. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. she does the same thing. And when I told her that Carl Weather was going to be Star Wars, she's like, "Okay, now I'm totally confused." It, it, it's 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 a funny um, conundrum because they're all like they're all inter interrelated, which is funny. But yeah, yeah, we so know we're... why you. <laughs> so Ralph, we, you know why you know. Why. We do. I don't know. You kind of got mixed up in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, but this is why this was why I'm mad at you. This is why I'm mad at you. So okay. last episode, you guys were chatting, yeah. and uh, at one point, um, someone it might have been you brought up Gina Carano. I did, and to explain who Gina Carano was, this is what you said. You okay. said, "Oh, she's that former MMA star who's a really bad actress." Yeah, I got <laughs> yeah. so mad. I got <laughs> so mad. Listen, <laughs> listen, 
she's been one of my favorite people for the last 10 years <laughs> ever since ever since she was crush on american gladiators so i take offense to your 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 oh your, wait a minute so she wasn't mma she was american gladiators no she was MMA. no no they, they, they you were just like that's what your description was that bad <laughs> I, actress I just, I just put down your girl i'm sorry <laughs> no reason like unprovoked like that's how you decided to describe well, her. She, was, she, she was in deadpool, deadpool it, it, yeah. like, she was yeah. terrible in deadpool but i mean but she was she's great in uh haywire and steven soderbergh's haywire I know she was dubbed, but that doesn't matter. That's beside the point. <laughs> and she was great in. Um, they pulled a Flash uh, Gordon uh, on her. Wow. Furious Seven? No, not Furious Seven. Uh, Fast Six. Yeah, Fast and Furious Six. Furious six. So, all right. Well, a lot of good actors. My, in those my response movies. is Ellie Mirren's in those movies. My response is this, Ralph. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry that I upset no. you, but no. I don't take back my words. All right. All right. <laughs> And then well, I just Nick Nick, you're I, I just do, negative about I, everything, Mister. <laughs> so, so, so Ralph, I do. Re, I, I am now recalling, however, uh, you know from from prior shows years and years uh, ago of your affinity for American Gladiators. I, I remember you talking about how much you love American Gladiators. Listen, listen, it is insane. So I don't know if you guys are cord cutters like I am, yes. but uh, uh, I have Pluto TV. Oh yeah, Pluto which TV. is a which is a free streaming service. You don't have to yeah. even type in your email. You just boot it up and it goes. And it's treated like live TV, and it just plays. You, you can't go back or anything. There's a couple of on demand stuff, but you know, and then you have to sit through commercials. But and they have dedicated channels to different things. Like Nerdist has a channel, Geek and Sundry. There's a Rift Tracks channel, a Mystery Science Theater channel. Yes. What? Mm-hmm. And then like two months ago. They put out American Gladiators channel, 24 hours a day, American Gladiators. The old ones, the 2008 ones, all of them. And so right now you can turn on your TV, your Apple TV, and start watching American Gladiators. So wow. everyone subscribe to Pluto TV. It's free. This isn't an ad. I know you guys like your ads. <laughs> but Our ads. But, dude, there's a Rift Tracks channel. God, 24 hours Rift Tracks. Oh, my gosh. 24 they, they hours got, Mystery Science Theater. Every James Bond. It's a James Bond channel. Oh my! Twenty-four goodness. hour James Bond movie. Meatballs. I just can't get over that. It was eleven years ago they brought it back. It didn't seem like it was that long ago. Wow. Yeah, two thousand eight. Wow. I remember when it came back. It's like all right, and then it only lasted one season. Yeah, it wasn't like the Jump Street. Ah, oh, dude. There's a Baywatch channel. <laughs> <laughs> I've derailed this completely. You have, we have completely derailed. derailed, this. derailed this. Uh, and you guys want to talk about uh, American Gladiators? I'm sure Nick, Nick had something bad to say about it. Mandalorian. But, you know, I mean, it's only because Ralph and I already talked about um, all of the goodness um, that was uh, Chapter 3. Um, you can Let me ch- guess. You, you didn't defend me at all, you jerk. No, I didn't. No. I just you were man of the bus, didn't you? I, I give you. He probably me too. I, if you're Ralph, like, Nick was probably negative, but he probably hated it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ralph, <laughs> the other two are, 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 are animals. <laughs> they don't get me like you do, Ralph. <laughs> I did say one negative thing about this episode at the very end. And that's, I feel like ba- the Baby Yoda voice sounds like it's pulled from stock sounds. Yeah. There's a lot of stock sounds, though, that are in the show. I mean, even but at Star least Wars they're ones. stock Star Wars sounds. Yeah, they're stock yeah. Star Wars sounds. So, it just sounded like a baby you would hear on a sitcom. So I, I'm, I'm going to start off with my criticism of the show. And then that uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna start with that, and then that's okay. gonna be like the, the the worst part of it, and then the rest is all up down or uphill, depending on how you look at it. My only criticism of this episode is that they did not really do anything. <laughs> I mean, like there was like nothing really happened, right? I mean, as far as the storyline goes, um, episode that, three, yeah, he had his best scar, man. Well, okay, so I mean, as far he, as he, timeline, he got he got John wicked. Every he bounty did. hunter. He did. He so did. that was my line. I was going to share that later. I was going to share that you jerk. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say that. But like <laughs> the actual progression of the story was like 45 minutes. <laughs> I mean, with the exception of, of like the, the, the crafting of, of the, 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 the curious. But anyways, but the, the, his, his, his best, yeah. The, yeah, the curious, the C-U-R-A-S-S. Yes. Curious. Oh. Um, 
He's so, he's whipping out some Star Wars knowledge on you, Ralph. Yeah, yeah I know. That's armory. That's armory, guys. Come on now. I mean, you, go back to your medieval times. Any RPG you've ever played on Nintendo, you get you get a curious. Anywho. So <laughs> aside from that, that was my only criticism. I feel like the storyline didn't really progress because it lasted like 45 minutes. Like it was almost like real time. I feel like I was watching 24 for a second there, but um that was it. Oh, no. Everything else of that this episode, I loved. I absolutely loved. And I and we'll get into like the rest of the show, but that was my only criticism. I just felt like there was not a whole lot progressing. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, it's like we have a limited amount of time to, to tell the story. Um, how is it going to advance? That was my only question. But other than that, I thought it was a fantastic episode. Uh, Nick, your your big criticisms, or maybe the biggest thing that you love about the, the episode? Well, we can get into them as we discuss the episode. Okay, but, sure. I just so want to be. I want to go on like a five minute rant. Do you? I mean, I know Ralph loves yeah. that, but you know. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we could always start uh, for the end. No, I mean, I actually, I one hundred percent agree with Chris in that it. I did like the episode, but it. it He's right. It really was just, oh, I'm rescuing Baby Yoda, and that's it. As in story wise, but I still, yeah, but, I still but like we the find out. We find out about a little bit why they're taking what this right. Yoda creature is to take its samples. I'm assuming midichlorians. Yeah, that's, that's what I assume too. Like I, I wrote cloning Yoda, midichlorians. Who knows? Because all he says is extract what you need and be done with it. So. You know, yeah, yeah. But he also says, let's extract. He also says that someone else is going to, that someone else wants him alive. Like that, this this uh, doctor character is um is acting on someone else's behalf. Mm -hmm. So who's that person? And what's great about it only being eight episodes, we're going to find out pretty soon. It's nice. It's Thrawn. Oh my god! Imagine. I, I like so bad <laughs> season season like, two. I feel like that's what's good about this is keep it all EU. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. don't have any saga people in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't have any of the other I, movies stuff in it. Make I, I it EU people. That is probably the one annoying thing about about reading any articles um, on the on the web is that I always run across like you know those like where's Luke and Leia are they going to show up. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I no. really don't care. Like, I really want it to be more about this story. I don't want the saga people in this at all. And I, I just think it's weird when, you know, it's like these, these articles and I know it's click, clickbait, you know, and, and uh, they get me. Don't click it. Just don't click it. Just don't click it. Just don't click anything. Matt. Yeah. Anyway, um, Nick, mm -hmm. you want, you want to get into this episode, the nitty gritty of like what happened? You got some notes there. I see. Well, I just wrote down like things that I noticed. So they're not really in any order, you know, or how I can start off the episode because I don't even remember how it starts. Other than he pulls in. Oh, yeah, okay. So he pull, so he pulls into orbit with Baby Yoda behind him. Um, cute little scene where he comes up and pulls a little knob off the joystick, you know, and he's like, you know, like anybody, like, hey, that's not a toy, you know, and and then he uh, calls into uh, Billy D. Chris. <laughs> uh, God, that's so awesome. <laughs> You'll Don't never, me. you'll never, <laughs> you'll never be like that. I, I, I accept it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm embracing it. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he's already, you know, bragging on him. So you did it, you did it, you know, and uh, and to deliver the package to the what would you call it, the commissioner of the the know, client, the client, yeah, to deliver yeah, directly to the client, yeah. You know. Um, okay. And you want to keep going? And then, you know, he shows up you have the uh, security droid, you know, same lines again. No, I wanted to bring up the security droid cause, cause you were a little bit like, eh, that security droid thing's kind of lame. Well, no, I didn't say it was lame. It's just that the whole first episode to me had too many original trilogy references. I felt, mm -hmm. uh, and especially, with especially with the audio, cause the audio was, you know, just canned from the original trilogy audio. So it's the same exact lines that were said in Return of the Jedi. It's the same. Um, uh, I forget it's what like the name. It's like a doorbell. I mean, you know, I know, but like even the even the Kabaz, oh, even, the, even the even the Kabaz, uh, character, you know, still did that. I mean, it was the exact yeah. same from A New Hope. I mean, so you're just kind of like, okay, like, but I mean, that's just me nitpicking. But it's you know, but I, but I feel like that could be the same character. Maybe, yeah, Grindon. 
I liked the the I liked the the moment though where we get the security droid that come pops out and then he rips it off. Yeah, like, that, was like cool. that was that was a nice payoff. For, so I feel like you know if you're like oh I don't like this, it's like we get this payoff where there's like something actually happens. So Chris, what yeah, a, a payoff on the droid from the wall. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's a stretch, buddy. <laughs> it's destroyed. Like, it was it was pretty much the the navigator from Flight of the Navigator on a wall. You want you want to kill Pee Wee Herman? What the hell, man? <laughs> I'm just Compliant. saying that I just like the fact that it was it, it was a moment where he, like you knew he meant, meant business at that point. In yeah, the, okay, in episode. fair enough. Well, there, there's I mean the things that I noticed about this episode just because we're kind of at that is that we saw two things happen with stormtroopers. One <laughs> one didn't miss for a change. He actually yeah. got hit. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second, guys. <laughs> the stormtroopers are not bad shots, and there's a lot of stormtrooper shaming. Here's the deal: you watch the opening scene of Star Wars, the very first battle, and rebels get wiped out by stormtroopers. Uh, you look at the Battle of Endor; uh, Princess Leia gets shot by a stormtrooper. He takes one shot, hits her in the shoulder. He was aiming at Han, though. In, <laughs> in. The in Star Wars, when they're on the Death Star, they're given orders explicitly to let them go because it's it's uh, it's Vader's plan to put a tracking device on the Millennium Falcon and have it lead to the Rebel base. That's all they've been looking for this whole time. And Tarkin says this plan had better work, mm-hmm. so they let him go. the The stormtroopers got an order to pursue them but let them escape. So they're really only bad shots in the Death Star sequence, but they get a bad rep. So, okay. I never knew Ralph was a stormtrooper apologist. He is. I, I'm, I just think it's, I think it's one of those star Wars jokes that people like to make on the internet. And I like to teach them otherwise. <laughs> It's, it's, it's like anytime anyone wants to make a joke about Lost, they say, oh, it's like the finale of Lost. It's stupid. And it's like, watch mm. the whole show, you moron. <laughs> so well, and, I'm, and, not and, Nick, I'm not calling Nick a moron, but I'm saying is <laughs> that Star Troopers, it's like a, it's like a, this famous joke that they're bad shots, but okay, well, answer, Tarkin, yeah, answer, out, said, answer me this one then, Ralph. Why is their armor so bad? Has you ever seen them reflect I, a blaster I, bolt? The guy got charred no. to death. It's like, what's the point of the armor? I want to know. I want to know what their armor is made of. Yeah, is it made of space plastic? Exactly. It, it's Plascar. It's not Beskar. It's yeah. Plascar. Plascar. Okay. Yeah. So, but no, I all agree with you on that. And then in like Rogue One, like Jin hits one over the head with a baton and it like shatters. What is it made of eggshells? Yeah. <laughs> you get them from a mud horn. She was supercharged. Yeah. Um, so uh, I felt like your your um, takedown of what Nick was saying is is on the line <laughs> with what the client says. The Mandalorian at the beginning of the Nick. Episode. Nick, he he's abandoning us. He really is. What a, what a, what, a, what are you pointing I'm out? Not... Something that happened in the episode. And can, can you say the B word on on these shows? Is that considered That's explicit? What do you mean? Yeah. I'm abandoning you. I think. What, I think. What what, what, a, what a Beskar you are. I think. We, I think. I think. I think we should start calling Matt Lando. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> Um, to Carl Weathers. You, you better, He's Carl Weathers climbing Carl from now on. Brute <laughs> Pence over there from. Uh, oh. oh man, those are some fighting words right there. <laughs> Do not, not even go there. Did Michael B. Jordan? He played Lando in uh, Solo. No, that's um. No, that was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're just messing. Childish Gambino. I forget his name. Um, Donald Glover. Donald Glover. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we knew that. He's he's trying to, to to bait us into saying something stupid, right. which is not far from you know reality. <laughs> I just figured Carl Weathers was Creed Senior, and oh right, <laughs> and Michael B. Jordan Creed Junior. Um, so so um, some other things that you guys noticed from this episode are on your list, uh, uh, Chris. Point. Dude, the heavy the heavy artillery Mandalorian is awesome. Do we know who He's, played that character? No. 
John Favreau. Oh, no. Yes. Is John that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That yeah. Cameo. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's. Oh, really? Yeah. John Favreau did. So that's why. That that's was, why he's such a bigger guy. You know, when he comes in, he's like, you know, you're a traitor. You're, you know, a I coward working muscle. with their empire and all that. But what? I assumed it was muscle, not tummy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't um, know that was him. So my, my, clearly, my favorite part of, of the episode, however, is you know when he's when he's down and out, and you think he's at his last, you know, last shot, literally, you know, d- dispensing of his of his flamethrower, and he's kind of in that that's that between a rock and a hard place or or a cargo ship. Um, and all of a sudden, you know, his boys, which to be fair, um, 15 minutes ago, hated him. Right. Now are on his side. So there, there's a little of a, of a timeline, you know, for me, the, the part of my criticism is that everything happened so quickly. There, there wasn't a whole lot. Like they went from literally I mean, having him as an outcast of, of the Mandalorian, you know, this is, whatever. This is the power of baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. I get it. No, it's a power. Of, it's a power of the armorer who said, "Hey, he keeps his helmet on." So you know, well, that, that, that's that is the way, or whatever they say. That was um, so good. Sure. But yeah, but but that scene though, when when all of a sudden they all just they all fly in, they're all you know, you know catapulting into the into the battle was was awesome. I mean, that was that was totally total badass, and that was obviously. I think that you could probably you pull a hundred people. That's their favorite episode, part of the episode. Um, but you got to see some really cool, um, a really cool gunfight. I mean, you get to see a bunch of Boba Fett's flying through the air. <laughs> it was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, an old West. Shooter. I actually like the. Uh, yeah, I like yeah. the rescue scene actually more because it's in the dark and killing mm-hmm. the stormtrooper. I actually thought that yeah. was a better action was cool. sequence. I, I like the tension um, mm-hmm. uh, to to go with what Nick said of that that rescue sequence, and um, something that Ralph and I talked about was. Uh, that that scene where he's <laughs> thanks Nick that scene where he's holding the baby Yoda and that you know, and and he's he's torching a stormtrooper you hear that stormtrooper scream is oh, yeah. awesome I, I just I love that that gritty aspect of uh, the rescue so and no yeah, I have a ahead. question for you guys you guys watched the Clone Wars did you watch that series yeah yeah mm-hmm. I watched a little bit of it. And I want to say, I want to, I'm going to ask you guys, um, there's at one point where uh, the Mandalorian returns and he's got his new armor on and he looks awesome. And he sits down at the table with Carl Weathers and, uh, and he goes through a couple of the bounty pucks and he pops one open and it's a, it's a Mon Calamari. Yeah. Yeah. It said he, he was a son of a nobleman that was running or something. Is he's that, is that character in the Clone Wars? Isn't there like a prince? There is, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it's the same guy. Does it? I mean, are, does it even matter? Does we can only see. It. I don't know if he even pursues that bounty. Who knows? Because he's on the outs now with Carl Weathers, or be the right. uh, <clears throat> So who knows? I, I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of questions. Like, do you think Carl Weathers will continue to be a villain now, or do you think it'll be one of those like it was business kind of things? I don't know. I think it was kind of business. Good. Yeah, because I don't do think you, he anything good. Well, I mean, he okay. So the only other person to really see him with the best scar right there, in his right. in his little vest, was the Mandalorian, and the Mandalorian shot him point right blank there. right there. Yep. Right. So he might not have any ill will towards him. He probably just wanted to stop him. Yeah, I think it was both of them. Or no ill will towards each other. It's just like you have to save face, you know, in a way. Like, and like yeah. like the Mandalorian in that moment, it's like I understand that you need to be here, but I need to leave. So if I shoot you there, you'll be cool, but you're you'll be incapacitated. You're gone. I I kind of had had came to that same conclusion too. Like I mean, he knew he had seen him earlier pull it out of that pocket and mm-hmm. put it back in there, and he clearly shoots him right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, otherwise, the Mandalorian would have shot him in the head and then taken the the three Beskar. The Beskar, right? Right. Yeah. right. Very fistful of dollars scene. I think they're cool. Mm-hmm. I think they're cool with each other. They they both understand what what's going on and. But I, I want to see scene with. Like, go ahead. Um, you finish your. You finish your thought. No, I was going to talk about the what happens in the episode as far as we see they do the um where the Mandalorian becomes the bounty and everybody's beepers are going off. Oh yeah, John Wick. Yeah, John Wick too. Yeah, yeah, John, yeah the John Wick too. Uh, a lot of there's John a Wick. Lot, there's a lot of really subtle 
other movie call outs in this episode. Uh, mm-hmm. That John Wick two was one of them. Definitely a fistful of dollars. And there's a couple of others we can get into later, but a new hope, new hope. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Predator. <laughs> Predator, Iron Man, <laughs> The Rocketeer. I mean, has like right hand all these little things. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky yeah. <laughs> Lost. I mean, what? Uh, um, I, I did want to. I did want to mention though about when when all of the the uh, those little tracker fobs go off. Um, it's interesting to note there that earlier in in the episode, um, and I, I don't know what we call her. Um, and, the, and the Mandalorian, um, but the uh, the forger uh, woman, she mentions armorer. the armorer. Thanks, yeah, that works. Uh, when she breaks up that fight, she says, "If you choose this way of life, you're either at some point you're either the you're both you're the prey, you're the hunter, and, or the prey." Right, and we actually see the Mandalorian become both. He right. hunts, and then he becomes the prey immediately afterwards. So I, I like right. that duality that that comes up with that. So. There was something I wanted to bring up that was Chris was talking about with the, the you know did you remove your helmet all that because it and then you know of course uh, Ralph talking about the Clone Wars um, this was something that struck me just a little bit as a thought kind of thinker because Chris's original thought from well, the first episode of the second episode was that you know perhaps the Mandalorian is not a true Mandalorian you know he's just someone who was adopted by Mandalorians and became a Mandalorian. Which is actually, I think, is a very good theory. And you see this with all these guys now surrounding him. And they're kind of questioning him, his loyalties, you know, his motivations, yeah. all these things like that. But the fact that she said, have you ever taken your helmet off? Now, this is a, a thing that struck me from the Clone Wars. And it is this little bit, this little pocket of Mandalorians, are they left over some Death Watch? Because Death Watch mm-hmm. it, are diehard loyalists. I mean, not loyalists, but you know, traditionalists. And they don't remove their helmet. Whereas someone like Sabine from right. the Rebels will. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you're kind of like, okay, so who is this? You know, that just like little thoughts like that, you know, and because you don't, I don't, the Mandalorian does not strike me as a, a diehard loyalist, you know, right. spoken. Um, I don't, I don't think it's <laughs> a theory. The I, think, I think he's not, he wasn't born a Mandalorian. Uh, he definitely has a um, affinity towards the foundlings. Because every time he brings in uh, Beskar, right. he he said some aside for the orphans. Um, he he was raised into this religion, and he takes it very seriously. And um, but maybe some of the more people who were born into it uh, don't see him as as a legitimate Mandalorian, mm-hmm. even though he's, he's gone through all the trials and steps it takes to do that, including. Um, when he when he is offered to get his signet of the mudhorn, he uh, declines it. You know he could have taken it, but he he tells her the truth and says, "No, I had help doing it." Um, he says it was a it was an enemy of mine, uh, but they didn't know uh, they were the enemy. Hmm. So at that point, he still thinks of the the baby the as um, as an enemy, which is interesting. But is he just saying that? Either way, he's he's one hundred percent like seems to be on board with uh, the Mandalorian way, yeah, uh, of living. So um, when the other guy comes in, he's like, "Well, you're just a you're not you know, whatever." It's like that line in Jaws where uh, he where Chief Brody says something like, "When could I become an Islander?" He says, "You can't. You have oh. to be born on the island to be an Islander." Mm-hmm. And that'll never happen. Like that kind of thing is he's adopted into it, and he's been there forever. But but uh, the other people or the other guy thinks you know you're not, you weren't born a Mandalorian, so you're not really one. Mm-hmm. And, I, think that's, I mean, yeah, that's a fair fair. And then, and then and then you can skip to the the, the ending minutes of the of the episode when he's getting his his escort out of the area, <laughs> and he looks out the window and sees uh, one of his cohorts rocking a jetpack. And then he says, "I got to get me one of those." Uh-huh. Like, you know, like, like right. he's never seen one before, which uh-huh. I thought was kind of interesting. Like, it wasn't like a, it, w- it was like a. Well, he's probably seen one. He probably can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a nod right. to to Iron Man as well. I, I thought that was more of a nod. No, to absolutely. Oh, I, well, no, like, the way that when he looks over and he gives him the salute, to me, mm-hmm. that was very Rocketeer. You know? Okay. All right. But, now the Iron Man, uh, the Iron Man call out to me was the uh, the sparrows. Because you see that in yeah. Iron Man One, you know that yeah, he's got the right. same technology. So you're like, oh, that's Iron Man. 
Um, one of the things that, that uh, I know Ralph has already heard me talk about, but I, I interpreted the, the salute actually as in their language, that's a big F you. That's like, I don't like you. Like, yeah. Do you guys recall ever seeing someone salute like that in a Star Wars? No. No. Like the military no. hand over the, yeah, I've been no. either. I thought it was weird. Yeah. It's, it's on, yeah. along the lines of uh, Chewbacca giving out the Tarzan call. Mm. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. <laughs> well, they can't all be lofty necks. So yeah. uh, the the question I was going to raise earlier, which is, is non sequitur to the, to the episode, but we're talking about other characters that are going to be in that we know are going to be in the series. I'm dying to figure out who the hell Bill Burr is going to be. Oh, yeah. Because the funny thing about Bill Burr is he hates Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> but he's buddies with Favreau and, and Favreau wanted to get him in on it. Like, So I'm curious to see, is is Bill Burr going to be a masked character or yeah. like a, a Nicky He's in the trailer. He is? Yeah. He's in the trailer. I, I missed it completely. Yeah, he, he's, shooting, he's shooting two guns. And then attached to his shoulder is another gun, and he's like shooting down a hallway, and it's his awesome. full face. Okay, it's full face. He's uh, no he kidding. Shaved, shaved ball. Yeah, it's like a quick shot. It's made to look like Gina Carano, um, awesome person, uh, shooting back at him. But you could tell they're oh, cut yeah. from two different scenes. But so yeah, I've, 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 I've never, I've never did the, done the research on that, and I'm now seeing it. That's that's awesome. You know, if you go to uh, patreon.com slash casino skunk, I do a breakdown shot by shot of every Star Wars trailer that's come out in the last like three years. Uh, and on that note, I Roger. Think we, should, we should take a commercial break. Oh. Hi, this is Ralph. Come to my Patreon. And, <laughs> and welcome back. Hopefully, you got that Beskar and uh, all of those Baby Yoda toys that you uh, need. For your Christmas stockings. Um, so I, 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 I know that the, the new line is uh, "This is the way," but to me, that I just kept saying, "So say we all." Every time I heard it, oh, it's <laughs> so like. And then, of course, when he walks in with the brand new Beskar suit, I go, "Wow, they turned him into a Cylon! Isn't that cool?" Because <laughs> he's so shiny. Not that I don't mean that as a as a slight against sure. him, but it looks to me, I was like, "Oh, look at him! He's all." I just kept thinking of Django Fat. Yeah, he was same yeah, Django. Yeah. Django. Yeah, so except he still has like a, the tan instead of the blue. Yeah, but right. he's not completely like, uh, and and I mean, obviously, we we see this part with the forger, uh, what she's going to build for him or reconstruct for him. But when he walks in, like you can still see, like one of his thigh plates is like all mang- mangled up. Still, it's like still okay. like like it, it's he's not completely like you know he didn't get a full suit there. So um, and he has a heads up display, but he doesn't have the. Um, the that antenna was, that comes down. That was one of the weird things about uh, this episode and the episode two was that, you know, because Bobo always had the heads up where he just saw that and he could see everything. Yeah. And it's like, why does he, why is he using a, a telescope, you know, when he could just have that? It didn't make sense to me, but yeah. maybe he just can't afford it yet. Same with the. It seemed, yeah. It seemed like, but in this one, he had a heads up, heads up display in his, in his helmet. So that so, might've been part of the process of, of building up his suit. It feels like a video game. After each level, you pick where you want your, <laughs> your you know, the stuff you earned, where you want to go to. Your attribute points. My upgrades. Exactly. <laughs> um, so um, what do you, what do you guys think of the baby Yoda? Like, are you, are you guys all on board? Are you like, yeah. love this creature? I, I like, think it's the, the best mo- money making marketing scheme that Disney's ever cooked up. <laughs> Get the toys. Where are the toys? Dude, like that. This is going to be the Furby of 2019. So I, I heard that that uh, Favreau kept it from being marketed mm-hmm. until to keep, to keep it a secret because basically, right. if you if you create that, like everybody would know, and it was yeah, smart. You, you know, you know, there there was a meeting at, so at some point where the artistic designer was like finishing off his touches on like his final draft of what baby Yoda is going to look like. <laughs> and John Favreau comes in and is just like, you just made Disney like a billion dollars. <laughs> like, like that, that. I mean, it's true. Like there's, there's, there's more memes of him that are trying to be taken down by, by, by Disney themselves, trying to take down animated gifts of him for copyright infringement. Like they're protecting the hell out of that because 
Baby Yoda is going to make more money than than probably any other Disney property from this year, excluding Star Wars when it releases. But like, it's going to make so much money. Like, I'm going to buy one, and they haven't even released it yet. Nor do I know what it's going to be. Is it going to be a plush? I don't care. I'm going to buy yeah. it. Yeah. Like, is yeah. it going to be a robot? I don't know. Going to buy it. Like, it, uh, I want it. And every Star Wars nerd out there. Their significant other wants one, or their kid wants one. Exactly. My, my daughter came in and has see, has seen a total of seven seconds of the Mandalorian, and she mm-hmm. can't shut the up about Baby Yoda. Like Mine she only too. saw him for seven seconds. Mine too. She, my daughter, was so like Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda. I mean, it is insane. Like it's how incredible. It, it like permeated my daughter's brain. I mean. Like, so kudos we, we, to that person who uh, you you know they like they finish that last touch and they save that 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 file and they hit send and they're like oh, oh, oh I am the king I just oh made so gosh. much money you know what's going to be the longest con for John Favreau is they're not going to be able to get Baby Yoda toys out in time for Christmas so he's going to do an early bird special <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be nice mm-hmm. that would be that would be great. early bird special for the Baby Yoda. No. And it's just going to be. I like, would love the cardboard. Cardboard. cardboard, yep, cardboard. Yeah, the cardboard. He's going to send everybody out a little piece of cardboard. <laughs> oh my! I'd, I'd love that little red. That happens. Oh, that'd be so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you know, I got some, I got some connection down in Hasbro. I wonder if I can reach out to them and find out what's going on. They won't tell me anything. I Did feel they? like maybe. I feel like maybe talk to all their licensees and we're like okay we also have one more thing that you have to make but we can't tell you just yet just yeah, be ready off. to go I'm sure i'm sure like funko is already designed it and they're oh, ready to did. get approval like, i feel did. like that's the easiest thing to do it just dawned on me though that next year so this coming year 2020 2020 comic con is going to be horrible because it's going to be a bunch of strollers with kids, just <laughs> it totally will be. Yeah, just okay. little little white egg strollers with with the yeah. in it, <laughs> and, a bunch, and, and a bunch of fat Mandalorians. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that the best cosplay though would be to dress up as the Mandalorian and just have a baby. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. So not not the stroller, yeah. but the, the 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 backpack. You know, mm-hmm. like a little jet pack with the baby Yoda in the jet pack. So mm-hmm. or you can fire the Yoda off of the rocket. <laughs> this thing runs on uh never mind. I don't know how to poodoo. Listen, you guys oh, can have God. all of your of your baby Yodas. All I want is the floating um a uh, baby carriage that follows me. Yeah. That would make my life so much easier. <laughs> and you can lock them up. Yeah. Too. I so, crop, push the button, it's seals. Yeah. I, I assume that, that is, it's not completely airtight, so you know it can breathe, you know, it's not like like rolling up the car windows and so um that scene with the R um the R four, I guess, mm-hmm. uh droid. I, I love that little moment though where he's he's trapped in the the wagon and the droid does not want to go. Right. <laughs> I just like those little moments in the show. I mean there's there's lots of, of small ones like that that uh really kind of complete it for me. Um so and even Carl Weathers, you know, in his whole Mando. Like every time he says Mando, I'm just like, this is awesome. So, no, no, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> I think it was an R, an R five. Is it an R five? I, I was like R four. because R five D four has this sort of. That's right, R five D four. Yeah, that's the right. shorter okay. dome. I think the R fives have the long sort of cone. Things. It's it's kind of a hybrid. I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not huge into droids. I only know that because I, I built a droid at Galaxy's <laughs> Edge and I got a clear dome and was, and then soon found out that that was an R3 unit. Mm. Oh. It's, a clear, it's a clear dome. So I've kind of been trying to fit, learn droids. So I think, I think the R, because R, R5D4 has the similar dome than the one in this one that's pulling the chariot. Yeah, I think it's a little bit, it's still a little different, but yeah. Um, I also was going to ask you guys, you know, in the first two two chapters, we we definitely got callbacks to the original Bounty Hunter gang. You know, we got the IG, we got the Transdoshians in chapter two. 
you see any like direct connections in chapter three to the uh, original? We got, we got we got other ones though. We got um one of Darth Maul's species. As we a, did, you know. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think, we got some I, we got some other uh, alien creatures that we there was a Greedo. See. Greedo, yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a there was more of a kind of droid looking guy, but then in one of the shots, I swear I saw a quick shot of Forlom, but mm, yes, they were if it was Forlom. No, you, no, you're right. There is a black looking bug eyed droid that yeah. that is that's in this definitely not Forlom. It's definitely but, not, but it it did kind of remind me of, of Forlom a little bit. So I don't know if that's supposed to be. I don't even know if it's a thing that they're trying to do, but you know, it's something that well, we got to see a small person in a space suit, which there was a space suit in the cantina scene originally. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So and it's we got the Ichuta. Astra. Ichuta, yeah, yeah. So. Which I guess they said Ichuta in the first chapter as well. So the it, it, it almost did sound like he actually did say an F bomb when uh, when Lando's uh, when Billy Dee's uh, telling uh, <laughs> when he's telling the uh, the bounty hunter he failed to leave. You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, and he, he actually sounds like he says F you to him. You're like, did he say that? <laughs> he said the dust breather, right? The dust breather. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that Constable Zuvio? <laughs> The 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 toy that they made for episode seven and the character got cut from the movie. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know who you're talking about. Had like a similar hat, but I don't know if it's the same guy. Did- and I like if it was, I like that. Uh, Carl Weathers said, uh, <laughs> "You had your chance. You right. had your chance." But, so oh, that would make it even better. Yeah, I like I like the Chekhov's gun here of the fact that he says. Everybody, everybody had them, but you, you're the one. So it's like he already tells them that everybody has it. So then later in the episode, when we see him, all of the, the pagers blowing up, um, it, it kind of makes sense, you know, like, oh, okay, yeah, of course they have it. So do we know, do we know why this episode's called The Sin? Is it that he got too emotional or too attached to his dad? I would say he broke, the, he broke the code. Yeah, he broke the code. Yeah. Of course, to me, though, like, that almost seemed because like I've seen um, the professional too often to where it's like you know no women no kids and you know as soon as to me in my mind it's like a bounty hunter wouldn't do that to a kid like you would never accept the job once he found out it was a kid but that, so to me in my mind that could be the sin too the fact that he took a bounty on a child hmm yeah I, I just took it as as that he broke. I mean, it, it deliberately shows him like saying, like, what are they going to do with it? You know, yeah. what are they going to do with the child? And and when he mentions the child, you know, I think it's it comes real to him. So that that it's it's not just a, another human um, or not human, but bounty that it, that, it, that it means something more. So. Um, Chris, you were going to say something? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just see your mute button go on and off from time to time, and I'm always like, hmm. "Yeah, I do that all the time." I'm an active muter. <laughs> Fair enough. So you, so you don't hear me fart and other things, you know. Fair enough. Um, well, there's one question left. Um, not that we really can have answer it, sure. but you know, he does say that once the other Mandalorians come to help him out, that they're going to have to find a new place to live. You know, because mm-hmm. now that they've exposed them, so like, where do they go from now on? You know, that's a, right. a good question. Nothing you guys can answer it, but yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. This planet that they that they're on is basically a lava field, right? That's that's been cooled. They're, they're lava fields. Um, like when we're coming into the planet, you actually see the the lava fields kind of burning, but where they're at, they're just on this um, kind of. It's it seems like a weird temporary society, like a like a, just a almost like an old western. Like it's just a thrown up town that, that has no other commerce except for um, the mercenaries. The it's like tattooing with a meth problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, where do you think he's off to? I don't know. That's a I've good question. Seen, good. I can say I've seen a couple things. Um, I know that Gina Carano was in finally shows up in the next episode and I remember in Entertainment Weekly that there was a shot of the Mandalorian her on like a um, the front porch of like a cabin. 
Yes, I think she'll have lines. Oh, oh am I not supposed to read the chat? <laughs> uh, I, I should I should watch myself because you guys will do that to me on the RCAP. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> We're just poking fun at Chris and oh yeah, and Ralph here. (laughs) Read you loud and clear. Um, all right. So, have you guys? uh, Did you you remember her from American Gladiators? I do. Yeah. I I I remember American (laughs) Gladiators, Ralph, very specifically because of you. (laughs) Yeah, dude. American Gladiators. I I think that she. When 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 American Gladiators made that that comeback, short albeit, but yeah. I, I I I may have favored her. <laughs> I thought she was gorgeous, and she is. I can't wait to to listen to your uh, Chapter Four podcast, Ralph, to see <laughs> exactly what you have to say about. Uh, oh, uh, 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 your boss is on it, Jay. Oh, okay. Jay's going to be on. I think that I think he's on the next one. Okay. You can call him our boss. Oh no! Do you guys get money from that commercial you just played? <laughs> we get money. Oh, okay, no, good. Not a, not a lot. But who do just... you who do you get who do you get it from? We get imperial credit. Oh, from Jack? Yeah. Is it from Jack? It's from Jack, right? Jack's your boss. Colleen pays pays oh, the bills. Colleen, the bill. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I'd rather have Colleen as a boss than Jay or Jack any day. Yeah. yeah, well, Jack Jack could never figure it out anyway. Like, what button do I push? To, I don't know. <laughs> and, and yet he can do things that I can't. So, no. so I can't can't make fun of Jack too much. Um, I never Ralph make fun this, of Jack. I asked Ralph this. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you think a Campto is? Like, is put, this it, a, put, it, put it in context. When, when, I've got a Campto of condoms. That was the, the container, the ice maker. I've got a oh. Campto of spice. I've got a Camto yeah. of Beskar. Yeah, it's, a it's, a, of it's, a por- it's a portable safe. So, 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 it, so you just so think the, the Camto. That's the Camto. Yeah, so we, we, we didn't talk about that, did we? So no, we um, anybody who's, who has a Facebook feed and they're following anything to do with the Mandalorian, you probably have seen um, articles posted about, you know, an Easter egg finally you know solves a, a 30-year-old mystery from Empire Strikes Back. It's like, okay, whatever. It doesn't it's solve so, shit. No, <laughs> Didn't solve anything. I mean, shit's <laughs> fine. It's yeah. fine. Clickbait. It's clickbait once again. So yes, there, is a, there, is, there is a scene in which um, <laughs> everybody is fleeing Cloud City, and there's this random dude with a terrible haircut running with this container under his arm that looks ice, like ice, ice cream, cream maker. And apparently, he the subculture of just people to throw in a jab. He can't just describe a person. He has to throw in a jab. I did. Yeah, he looks terrible. He's a horrible haircut. <laughs> She's a bad actor. Yeah. Bad yeah. <laughs> so, so, anyways, so there's this guy, and it's just, it's just random, like two second scene, and this dude's running down and fleeing away with this container under his arm. And there's apparently like a subculture of like you know frame by frame Star Wars observers who have dedicated like a whole oh, yeah. existence to this guy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> and <laughs> he's Will Roy Hood. Yeah, they do so, it. Every- they do it every name. year at Comic Con. They do it every yeah. com- at Comic Con. They have the the running of the ice cream makers, and it's like yeah. about twenty guys. With Is it really? Cream. Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, they all no. dress up as that character, and they will run through the halls of Comic Con with the ice cream makers in their hands. See, it's funny. Is I, I probably have seen it and had no idea what that was. <laughs> um, and I consider myself a Star Wars nerd, you know. In anyway, so we come to find out it's just a, a it's a it's a valuable container that contains stuff that's you know sensitive or. Best car, a safe, if you will. Yeah, to to hold things. I but it's cool that they put that sort of back into canon. But it doesn't yeah. exp- it doesn't explain any mystery. It was a prop that, that John Favreau knew about, and then decided to like legitimize right. it a little bit, somewhat. But it didn't solve the mystery. Yeah. No. So if you see that, it's yeah. definitely oh, great. It's a cool story. I get annoyed by the clickbait that just calls him ice cream man. And I'm like, what? You can't do any more research than this. Like he has a name people. It's Phil. Phil, the ice cream man. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. um, 
so uh <laughs> ice cream man um we got that uh the safe the best car i th- i or the camto i think camto is a is a weight measurement that's that was my my best understanding of that i just thought it was weird that um uh grief uh the character grief mentions a camto of spice and that is the second reference to that unit of measurement so um i, I don't know it's it doesn't really matter i've got nothing else to say well you think it's like a gram or something you know that's a lot of spice, right? Like, spice, I mean, like yeah. if you think about like how much Beskar was in there, if you're going to get that much drug, I mean, come on, like that's a lot of drug. That so is something that we, I, well, apparently it's a, it's a drug because he mentioned something about getting this much spice and like a bunch and you'll forget about it by the time you get there. Kid. Yeah. That, I mean, just cause you, you're going kind of on that route. I would love to see an episode where they actually go to, Kessel, out. well, go to, go to Kessel and see the spice mines. Cause we've never seen them ever. What are you or, talking about? Did we see him? Did you even watch Solo? Did you watch Solo at all? I did. That's where they are. They're at the Spice Mines of Kessel. That's think... literally where the movie takes place. Does it? Okay. <laughs> My bad. Actually, I only watched it once in the theater. That sounds what? Like yeah. I watched it I wasn't in a fan. To, to, to be I, fair, I, I also have only seen it once. So, uh, but you knew well, it was the Spice Mines of Kessel, right? I did not know it was Spice Mines. I guess... In the very beginning of the oh, film, seems- where? I just see the. You know how they make. You know how they do the Kessel Run, right? Right. Right. They, they, the planet they land on is Kessel. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah. In the mine. <laughs> it's not and thinking about trade, like that. And they're trading for spice. Uh, they're trading Chewbacca and Han Solo for for. Uh, they're making them workers for their spice mines, but it's just a way to get them to infiltrate the spice mines. Yep. Oh, okay. I only saw it once. So. You should watch Solo again. It's good. Dude, I watched Solo like probably no shit, no shooting you. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Listen, I love Solo. It's going to get me excited. I watch it at least every other week. Really? I watch Solo all the time. Oh, okay. yeah. Matt, Matt, did you want to read that email that we got? Oh, yeah. Um, you, you just wanted to interrupt Ralph gushing. <laughs> no, no, no. It's because it had to deal with Solo. Oh, so okay. In the oh. email. So that's why. Well, we did oh, get it. I, I just oh. want to know. Do you guys know that Billy D's name in real life is William December Williams? Is it really? It's his real name. Makes sense. Huh. Yeah. huh. William, okay. William December Williams. I had no idea what you were talking about Yeah. in the chat. I was like, what is he talking about, William <laughs> December Williams? I thought it was like a, a good Jack type joke. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it was just a hardcore Star Wars fact. Boom. No. Boom. <laughs> All right. This is, I want to hear this solo. Okay, so um, if if perchance you want to write into uh, Owen and Bruce Barbecue, we would love that. So uh, we will be continually covering The Mandalorian as well as uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, you can send us an email at the Force is well done at gmail.com all spelled out the force is well done we get this email from uh, mark it says hello uh, this is mark from chicago sorry to be redundant there mark <clears throat> number one if we see han in season two do they use ford and make him young or do they use solo han and make him older good good question there thoughts i don't think he'll be in the show period yeah I'm I'm kind of with with you on that. I mean, we we mentioned earlier on, like I, I mean, the, there was in episode one when he's looking at the pucks. I mm-hmm. felt that when he said a smuggler, you know, right. like, you know, I felt that he was referring to Han in that little bit there. But I think that's for as far as it'll go. Yeah, I mean, I I don't mind if we get shout outs to the original. Um, characters, the the Skywalker saga, saga characters. However, I don't really want them to to take over the story at all, and so I would I would rather it just be kind of a. I could actually see S- Solo appearing maybe in the in the the Obi Wan um, mm-hmm. series, like as a cameo, maybe in the background or something. But again, right. I don't think anything that they do is going to take away from that character's story. I would like, think. Like maybe, I think uh, I would see. I would probably see Chewbacca before I saw Han. Hmm. Yeah. One to I feel like if you look at the Cantina scene, the original Cantina scene that uh, 
Obi Wan's real comfortable talking with Chewbacca. Yeah, yeah. And they they have somewhat of a past. They both know Yoda. Uh, both Chewbacca and Obi Wan know Yoda, so they have some sort of common ground. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see when the Obi Wan show takes place because maybe we get to see Chewbacca before he meets Han Solo. Hmm. In, in the movie Solo, I don't know if you remember that, but yeah. Han Solo and Chewbacca meet each other in the movie Solo. <laughs> oh, you were talking to Nick about that. <laughs> no, I remember that part. <laughs> we took a shower together. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, number two uh, question here from from Mark uh, says: Any chance we have a direct connection to Episode Nine, maybe about the Emperor still alive, or we learn about a new cloning facility that is also mentioned in Episode Nine? Thanks, Mark. I can see that being likely. Maybe not. Maybe you don't see the emperor, but we get like subtle. It gets referred to enough to where we can put the pieces together, so that people who see the movie, like they can still watch the movie without having watched the Mandalorian. But those of us that have watched the Mandalorian get a little extra out of it. Um, it sounds like, like I mentioned, this the 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 doctor is working for somebody else. The doctor also has Camino and symbol on his outfit. Right. So you can kind of piece things together. Um, clearly, they want force users. So yeah. who, knows, who knows if the emperor is behind it or if they're making a new emperor or whatever. I don't know if we'll see it in the show, but it'll help us kind of piece things together a little bit. Yeah. And episode seven of the show is the only one that doesn't come out on a Friday. It comes out on a Wednesday, and that's because it's the same week as uh, Rise of Skywalker. Oh, right. So it comes out the day before. Mm -hmm. It comes out on a Wednesday, and then Rise of Skywalker comes out Thursday night. So it could be that it lines up, but I don't know if it will. It seems like it's kind of a – Chris is going nuts. Yeah. But, I mean, it's like like with the Marvel shows, they don't really tie into the Marvel movies – but we don't know how Disney's handling Star Wars because I feel like Star Wars is canon across the board. But Chris, when is this series scheduled to be done? Final like, episode, like date. December thirtieth or something. Yes, yeah, before the like a week year. after, like a week after. Yeah, I've got Star it here. Skywalker comes out. Okay, I've had a couple of crazy crackpot theories. Do it. And, and, and so far, since we've been covering the show, my next crazy crackpot theory is the purpose for getting samples from Baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. Could it possibly tie in to the resurrection of the Emperor in the movie? That's what we just said. But I missed everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about well, your thing. Let me ask you this. Could it be to resurrect or rise Anakin Skywalker. Rise. Perhaps. Because ooh. ooh. Or is C3PO's last name Skywalker? <laughs> <laughs> I will stop watching Star Wars. <laughs> and of course, you know, like a, uh, did, I, did I miss the beginning of that where you're talking about the resurrection of the Emperor and thing that had to do with Yoda? I'm just saying it could be tied into the cloning facility. Because I, the doctor has has Camino and has a Camino and symbol on his outfit, right. and he definitely he he mentions while talking to Werner Herzog in this episode about somebody else who he is working for. So is the is the Emperor already alive at the cloning facility? To bring back Anakin, or trying to bring back Yoda, or trying to do something with midichlorians? Uh, will that tie in with the 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 Rides of Skywalker? Uh, but, I can't wait for December. 20th. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I want the movie to to rely on the show to, for the information, but but I feel I, like we will get more out of it, maybe, possibly. I, uh, Chris, I mean, I, I'm definitely with you on that idea of of uh, harvesting the the midi chlorians to bring back the emperor, and it would tie in with some of some of this the storylines that we've gotten from this this new trilogy. Um, I'm I'm not a fan of Resistance. I do watch it because <laughs> my because I just watch it with my kids. 
um, I, I just I just can't get into it as it is what it is. Resistance is is what it is. However, I felt like they there was a storyline there with with two kids that appear in that show that might be force sensitive, and uh, the fact that the first order was was tracking them down, and that idea that maybe they've been collecting force sensitive kids this whole time to harvest their their midichlorians. So, and could one of those kids be Ray? Because when she goes into the the black bee hole of uh, the <laughs> island, she's looking for her origins, and instead she finds many copies of herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, uh, you're saying Baby Yoda is raised dad? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking that maybe, maybe Luke's hand from Cloud City, because we which was attached to his lightsaber, <laughs> which Ray now has that hand. Where did that hand go? So she, could he, she be a clone of him? Could she be the Skywalker? Sure. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I, this would, not. I mean, it would directly reference the heir to the empire series. I mean, that's, yeah. that's kind of a storyline that they, that they used in, in uh, the, the first Thrawn trilogy there. Um, because that's that's how they get uh, clone Luke, and uh, at the end of that uh, last command. So, um, yeah. Anyway. I'm not sure if I've ever said. That. I know I talked about it. I think with Matt. I'm not sure if he's brought it on air. Like Ralph, what do you think of this? Like, because um, <clears throat> you know we were introduced to these portals in Rebels that you can go. You know, save people. You can go do it in and out time. What if not only was Anakin made by midichlorians by the emperor or Plagueis. What if Ray was too at the exact same time, but she was pushed forward through these portals. And that's mm-hmm. why you see that in the very beginning of the force awakens that she just appears on this desert Island and she doesn't know and that Island, but desert planet, she doesn't know where she came from. She doesn't know who her parents are. It could almost be the same argument that they're both skywalkers and one of the kind of the same duality of, Luke and Leia being brother and sister, you know, there, oh, is, sure. there is another in the fact that there's two chosen ones possibly. I don't, I don't like the concept of time travel. I don't either, but um, I thought, yeah, I don't know. I thought, I thought rebels did a really great job of walking that thin line with that episode. Still, still maybe one of my favorite um, from that season um, for some of the emotional power that it held. Um, when Ahsoka says, um, uh, well, I won't, won't give anything away, but it's, it's really, really just, emo- I just, I can't, I can't speak highly enough about that last season. Um, but that being said, there's something so ingrained in star Wars that it's so set in a timeline of stone that I'm kind of with, uh, Ralph and that idea that, that time travel doesn't work very well within the saga. So I don't, it could be something where her, she's gone through a process like of this cloning process where it like, it took this long to perfect so that there might be a lot of copies of her. They just never worked out. Hmm. And this is the one so, finally so, they got it right. And so there she they're, got, they're going with the alien resurrection plot. Sort of, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't I can't wait to see cuz according to JJ he's going to answer all the questions that were brought up sort of in episode 7 and also in Lost. He's going to yeah. Hey, listen oh. man. There, there's there's plenty in Lost for you to fill in the gaps <laughs> and, and, and make your own Razzle dazzle. And then he'll finally let us know that uh, Snoke was Tarkin, right? Yeah. Snoke was Tarkin. Or well, Alan Alda, one or the other. No, no, Snoke is Tarkin, right? Because if you're going to be in a Death Star that's completely filled with like a shoot load of uh, kyber crystals, <laughs> it would make you morph and grow really weird. Yeah. And, yeah. So it would probably stretch his body and be inundated with force powers that you couldn't believe. Well, post- we're going to see, we're going to see his Sith ghost and we're going to see, uh, we're going to see Obi-Wan and Yoda and their Sith ghosts. And they're going to 
Sith Ghost Wizard battle it out, and the Sith Ghost of Anakin's going to be the one to break up the two and bring balance to the Force well, once and make- for all. You're bringing also he's a clone, and also <laughs> you're getting very insithious there. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're uh, you're bringing up an interesting debate though because uh, I'm not sure where it came up, but they've always said that there's you can't have a Sith ghost because they're too full of hate to have harnessed that power to live immortal. At least that's the way I've always known it to be. But they can put their essence into objects, but not they can't live forever. Relics. Relics, yes. And we know that someone who's a cloner wants the essence of a baby Yoda. Mm-hmm. True. Okay. So maybe so they're about, maybe that. they're trying to figure out a way to mm-hmm. live forever, like Darth Plagueis wanted. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't able to do it because of, because he was a Sith. What he needs to do is get Jedi Metachlorian and some good side stuff in his system to be able to move beyond the oh, world of the living. Side, that good side stuff, man. Everybody needs it. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> one, one thing I just wanted to mention to Nick, though, that in the art of The Last Jedi, as well as I believe in the art of uh, Force Awakens, they do uh, some of the concept stuff uh, involved uh, a Sith, Sith ghost. And and the the Ray, the concept art for Ray looked like Mark Hamill, like could be a, a daughter of Mark Hamill. Hmm. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I just kind of want the movie to come out, so I don't have to speculate about this shoot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, one month, one month, guys, and we'll be uh, back at uh, talking about Rise of Skywalker. Oh man, yeah, so I, I, I actually ended up buying my tickets. I don't know if I told you that last week, but I bought my tickets. Um, I wasn't going to, but I, I realized that by chance, I actually have the day off on, yeah, the, on that the, Friday. Yeah, you have the day off anyway. Yeah, so it's one of those. It's one of those glorious, like, um, like uh, random chances where I I have the day off and I don't have to deal with <laughs> family. Family, <laughs> it's the will of the force. Yeah, it is. It's the will of the force. I mean, technically, my wife will be home on school vacation. My kids will be home on school vacation, which means I'm gonna go to the movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I told my wife, I go. There's there's just two hours. By the way, the runtime was released. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but it's, it's like two hours and forty minutes or something like that. It's too long. It's yeah, the longest, think so. you know, longest Star Wars ever. So I, I've got my tickets, and I'm, there's a theater. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but there is a theater near me. There's a lot of theaters that are doing this now, where they actually have assigned seating, right? Yes. And it's you know like with recliners and such. Mm-hmm. So um, I've got like middle row, like right in the middle of the theater. I'm excited. So, I, got a, I got an 11 o'clock in the morning show, so I don't fall asleep in those recliners, <laughs> which I've done. Well. Um, we we could continue to talk about about Star Wars, and uh, I do like to keep uh, our, our our barbecue to to just about an hour. Any last thoughts though about uh, this Mandalorian episode, or or even Rise of Skywalker stuff that we talked about? It's all good. It's all good. It's all, I love Star good. Wars. I like Star Wars. I'm glad that we're getting good Star Wars. Yeah, and more. more yeah, yeah. This is this is the the good month. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough once January hits. I know. Cool. We got we got Clone Wars in February. Clone well, we've got, we've got we've, yeah. mm-hmm. and we've got a movie in 2020, 2022, I think they announced, right? What movie is that? The un- unannounced Star Wars title. Oh. Is that a Ryan Johnson one? I don't know. Boycott. That, that's that's been that's been up in the the air. So, untitled Star Wars film 2020? No, no, that can't be no, right. That can't be right. That, can be that can't be right. Uh, there's rumors that they they might make a feature film. Oh, no, it's 2022, 2024, and 2026. So there's clearly a new trilogy. Um, there's rumors that they might make a Mandalorian feature length film. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, John Favreau said yeah, he's not opposed to it. Yeah, yeah. So who knows? We'll see. I, mean, um, I, I, I the only yeah, trilogy I can see them making is either an origin of the Jedi trilogy, which I think would be better just as a one single film, or a, an old Republic trilogy. Oh, and that's, that's what a lot of people want to see. People want to see Darth Ravon and 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 um, Darth Malak. Malak, yeah, and all yeah. that. I could see it like a Jedi Academy with Ahsoka do like essentially mm-hmm. Harry Potter but Star Wars, like make which, it. 
really, really school heavy. Like within yeah. that, yeah. you can have cameos by some of the some of the prequel characters. Yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, let's let's, let's be real. Let's go back to the Yoda plush toy for the holidays. You know, the the whole idea of of Star Wars every iteration of Star Wars is it's made for kids. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. And if you want to 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 reel in the next generation of Star Wars payees, <laughs> then you just take from Rebels and make 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 a movie out of it because that's how you're going to make yeah. a lot of money. So if they sustainability, do, if they do a Harry Potter Star Wars type thing, do they let Force Ghost Anakin into the school around those young ones? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> nope, I don't think so. Oh, so okay. He's he's got one of those like. Um, He's got to report to the to the head of the the school and like give his identification, and he's not allowed in. Okay, so it's a real real creepy yeah, factor. Yeah, you know, he could be like head, you know, nearly headless Nick, you know, just wandering around. You know. Speaking of nearless headly, headless Nick, near, nearless, nearly, nearly headless. Nearly. How, how can he be nearly headless? Um. All right. Well, let's let's wrap this this show up. Um, we would like to, at this point in time, mention a few ways that you can help out this show. Uh, <clears throat> we we have an Amazon affiliate link. Uh, I believe it's amazon.com slash Jack. Uh, anything that you buy there helps out this podcast. Uh, you can become a patron by going over to patreon.com uh, slash Jack. Help us out there. Become a patron member. Um <clears throat> And um, you could you could give us a review on iTunes. That would help. Rate and review the show. Uh, check out what Ralph is doing over at Casino Skunk. That would be very helpful. Um, he does a lot of a lot of Star Wars stuff. And uh, I follow him on on Facebook. And you got me. You got me, Ralph, with the Mandalorian and the Kenner Kenner text. Oh yeah, yeah. That that was very cool. Uh, very cool yeah. shirt uh, design. Uh, you got me. Wait, you bought one? I did. Oh, sweet. Thanks, man. Hey, uh, fair warning. If you do end up following Ralph on Facebook or any other social media and you say something stupid, he will call you out on it. (laughs) Fair warning. Uh, Listen, listen, I was, I was, here's what happened. I listened to this show while I'm at work in the middle of night by myself in Disneyland. The, I, my confusion was on the same track as Jack's. (laughs) <laughs> and Jack's patience just gave in and was like, okay, I accept this. Yeah. And I was like, no, Jack, this isn't right. <laughs> so I paused the podcast, put down the thing I was working on, sent out a tweet. <laughs> How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourself. Put a picture of Billy D. Because <laughs> that's where I was at. It would have been my, my been response, though. What was my response? Um, well, sh- <laughs> shoot. <laughs> right. Damn it. Right. I, it was, yeah. I, I am sympathetic I was, with, with Chris's plate. Uh, uh, you know, he's got baby brain. So, you know, I give him no, a don't, don't defend me now, you piece of... <laughs> shoot. You piece of shoot! You've been sitting here throwing, you, you, dude. You've been throwing Nick and I, most mostly me, under the bus for the no. last two episodes. No, you just hold off. No. I don't. I don't. I don't need your 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 patronage. Okay. Well, apparently, yeah. Ralph, go over to K, go to yeah. Go to Casino Skunk and uh, give your patronage at, there. At this point, before Chris throws me under the bus, uh, I would like to th- thank a couple patrons that make this show possible. Really appreciate Tack from Tatooine. Eckhart 3 to Eckhart 7. Uh, Richter, old buddy, do you, do you read me? Uh, Maggie, the real Mandalorian. Ed, the creepy, salacious crumb. Joanne with the stolen Death Star plans. And Drake, the superstar destroyer. We appreciate everything that you do. And only on this show do, do we actually come up with fun nicknames for you. Uh, all of the other shows, the, the, they, don't, they don't go that extra mile. So I just want to say that. So I, I chip in. I chip in too. You go the extra parsec. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Nice. Chip in the extra parsec. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> thanks. Thank you again, Ralph, for for joining us. For yeah, thanks for having me. This this episode, and um, uh, I, I I guess Chris and Nick are going to roast me on on uh, the Ramble Cast. So if you enjoy listening to uh, Chris and Nick, give me shoot. 
uh, then check out the Ramblecast After Dark. For- you definitely should. If you <laughs> like that part, you definitely need to listen to the Ramblecast After Dark. You can you can swear on that show, right? We can swear on all that one. day. Oh, all what f- day. You know, what the fuck am I doing on this show? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you, have to, do you have to edit it, or do you have to? Yeah. We don't edit. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Great show, guys. It's one in a person. Oh, 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 oh. oh, hey, want to hear something good? Oh, wait, did you stop recording? No. Oh, okay. I, I won't tell you till it stop recording. It's good. It's good. Leave the it's only for you guys, though. Leave listeners on a cliffhanger. No, this is good. No, I'm. Sp-